Well, welcome in the precious and glorious name of Jesus to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. In this episode, we're going to talk about groaning in the Spirit, and I'm going to share insight from Smith Wigglesworth. You know, I look at the hour right now where the spiritual warfare has dramatically intensified, and we are living in the last of the last days, and as believers, we need to know how to get into the presence of the living God and get impregnated with His purpose to be broken by His love and begin to groan and cry out. There is a generation out there that is about to be lost. And unless we, His people, catch the heart of the Lord our God and get so disturbed on the inside that there comes a cry that refuses to be silent, there are backsliders, there are family members that are on their way to hell. And we have to stand up and get a cry, a desperate cry, an awful cry that the enemy so hates but touches the heart of the Father. There's a cry that needs to come, a groaning to see the purposes of the Lord God released on this earth in this hour. So I pray you're ready. Because let's pray and let's get ready to receive the insight from heaven. Oh, Father, we come in the name of Jesus. And I would ask for eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart. Mighty, powerful Holy Spirit, come and just move. There is no distance, Father, in the Spirit. And we gather in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come. Open the Word. Come glorify Jesus. Come make Him so known to us. And let us, Father, receive the word that you have for us, that your purpose might truly be brought forth. Jesus, we give you the worship. We give you the honor and we give you the praise. And we stand, Father, and ask in the name above all names, the name of Jesus, we pray. There is an intensity. Oh, things have so intensified. And we need to understand that we are spirit people and it's time to walk and operate in the realm of the Spirit. In Ephesians 6, Paul is talking about spiritual warfare. And in verse 18, he says, with all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. And with this in view, be on alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. There is a watch in us. There is a determination that, God, we have a direction. We have a purpose of our cry. And it is for the brethren. It's for those we love. It's for your purposes, God. And there's something in us that refuses to be satisfied. Smith Wigglesworth said, For we know that the whole of creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly awaiting for the adoption, the redemption of the body. We should have such a groan and crying because as I look at what's happening in this hour, I want to stand clean. I want to stand pure. I wonder, God, just to be so consumed in you. I'm eagerly awaiting your return. And there's just something in me. God, I've got to have more. And there's a deep groan, a cry that comes out from every, oh, fiber of my being, crying out, God, I need you. And I see the brethren, and I see the state that so many are in God. And there's a cry, and my words fail me. My language is simply not strong enough. It's a deep cry out to the deep. It's a deep groan of the spirit that we need in sour. It's a groan that births. It's a groan that breaks. It's a groan that changes everything. Changes the very spiritual climate. This is a time where we need prayers that don't bounce off the ceiling. We need prayers that penetrate, impact, and change. Oh, there's so much going on. I see what's happening right now to the nation of Israel. And I understand that there's something else in parallel going on in a war against the church. There is an onslaught to get the church to pull back. 
The enemy always wants to get the church on the defensive. But you must get in that first gear at least and begin to get on the offensive spiritually. Stop defending and get offensive and begin to take territory, begin to move forward in the name of Jesus. Smith said, But when we are absolutely taken in hand by the Almighty God, God turns even our weaknesses into strength. He even makes the barren, helpless, groaning cry come forth so that men and women are reborn in travail. There's a place where our helplessness is touched by the power of God and where we come out shining as gold refined in the fire. And I find there's this place where we enter in and He so touches the very core of our being. He comes and takes possession of the secret place of our heart. And He touches it. And as He touches it, that life, the depth of His love, so impacts us that a cry of such desperation comes out that, God, there must be a change. There must be a breaking. We have been so caught by the world. We have been sleeping and more moved by what we see and what we feel. Change has got to come. Where we start to become His children again. Spiritual. Filled with a zeal and a passion and a fire to see the things of God on the earth. Filled. Not moved by that which is the natural, but moved by that which we see in the Spirit. Crying out with a desperation and a perseverance and continuously pressing on that, God, we refuse to be silent. We will give you no rest until you fulfill the promise that you made. Oh, what is at stake? May the Spirit of the living God open our eyes to see fully what is at stake and how weak we are. I can't do it. There's nothing I can do to change that person. There's nothing I can do to reach that person. How, God? And out of that, the Spirit of God so touches us in that place of weakness. And He puts in a groan too deep for words. A groan that cries out from the very core and depth of our being, saying, God, I'm crying out from the deep of you to reach your very heart, God, because this means so much to me. This is so important to me, and I know it is to you. And so I cry out. I cry out. In Matthew 5, verse 4, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. There's a cry to those who mourn. There's a deep cry out and groaning for those who mourn. And they have to be satisfied. They wreck. There's something broken, missing in my life. And God, only you can satisfy. Only you can fulfill. Only you can make me complete and whole. There's a groan that comes because I stand in intercession for somebody else. As if I was them. God, I'm broken for them. I see, God, their desperate situation. And I'm praying out, God, they need to be touched. They need their eyes open to see. They need that spirit of deception broken from them. And so a cry by the Spirit comes out. Smith will go on to say, It is beautiful as we gaze upon perfect Jesus. Jesus so exceeds everything else. For this reason, Paul felt that whatever he was, whatever he had been, whatever he had accomplished, he considered rubbish. He could not achieve righteousness in his own strength. Oh, Father God, that in the precious name above all names, we would come to such a place that we would recognize our desperate need of you. That we would stop being so puffed up, seeing ourselves as so spiritually mature, seeing ourselves as so fully arrived, and looking at others in such condemnation, seeing their shortcomings, but looking at ourselves as if we are something. Oh, mighty Holy Spirit, let that breath, that purifying wind, blow through us today. And bring, Father God, us to the knees. And let, Father, that we be broken on the altar until there's a cry, a cry of desperation, a cry, an awful cry that recognizes our dire situation, that without you, God, we cannot do this. Without you, we cannot overcome. Without you, we will fall short. Jesus, 
We need you. We desperately need you in this hour. There's a hunger in me. God, there's a mourning, a crying out because I'm missing. I'm lacking without you. I must have you, God. I must have you, Father. Oh, in Colossians chapter 4 and in verse 12. Ephesus, who is one of your number, a bond slave of Jesus Christ, sends his greetings. Oh, we got a lot of people. Well, let them know I'm thinking about them. Say hi to them. But God is looking for those who are not just saying hi, not just saying, oh, hey, I'm thinking about you. But listen to this. Always laboring in prayer, earnestly for you in his prayers, that you may stand perfect and fully assured in all the will of God. Paul said, I testify of this. Oh, God, we would have such people. And this earnestly is a straining of every nerve. It's talking about that place where the Spirit of God so touches you, so moves upon you, that there's such a desperation, there's a holy cry that comes out. Oh, it's a cry that calls God, only you can satisfy. The Word says, cry out to me and I will answer. I look at many of those who, in the time of Jesus' earthly ministry, would be in the crowd and they would see Jesus or hear that Jesus was there. They knew their answer, their breakthrough was so close and they began to cry. And the crowd would say, be quiet. Oh, the enemy wants to suppress the voice, the voice of the one who will dare rise up and cry because they're the one that recognize the answer is in Jesus. We have a people that look and see their own strengths. There's a people right now, there's so many in the church that look at themselves and they say, oh, I have everything I need. And yet they are naked, wretched, and they don't see it. Oh God, we need a fresh oh, wind of your spirit, a spirit of the spirit of truth to come and open our eyes to see and bring us to that place where we understand how helpless we are until we cry out and refuse to allow the crowd to allow the world, to allow our flesh or the devil to silence us. God, we've got to reach you. We've got to lay a hold of you. Holy Spirit, come even right now and begin to move. Holy Spirit, begin to stir and disturb us until we appreciate, Father God, oh, that we want more of you, more of you. May we never be satisfied. May a mourning, God, and a crying so increase, enlarge us on the inside. We must have more of you, God. In this hour, more. Father, we worship you. Jesus, I give you honor. Jesus, I give you worship. Jesus, I bless the name of the Lord our God. I worship you. I worship you. Oh, Smith began to explain regarding John the Baptist. And I want you to think about him. In that hour, he was a voice of truth. But you had Herod didn't want to confront or think about the sin. And we got so many people that are content. They're enjoying life. Don't disturb me. We have all these believers. So, oh my gosh, blowing off every sign that's going off. The wake up call from heaven that's blasting. And they're like, no, I'm in love with the world. Please, I just want a little more time. Just let me be comfortable for a while. And the Spirit of God is beginning to shake move. Listen to this. Smith said, in the wilderness, John was without food and clothing of his earthly father's priestly home. He only had a groan, a cry, the cry of the Spirit. Yet from John's place in the wilderness, he moved the whole land. God cried through him. It was the cry of the Spirit. Oh, that awful cry. And all the land was moved by that piercing cry. It wasn't the cry that was placed in the perfect place. It wasn't all his marketing. It wasn't his connections. But it was the deep cry of the Spirit in him, that awful cry that broke things, that challenged things. And there's never been an hour where God is saying to his church, Awaken! Arise! And begin to cry. Oh, to begin to cry out to God and to seek His face and to stand in the gap. To seek souls, one, and disciple for Jesus. To see the backsliding, the backsliding, sorry. Oh, to be brought back. Where's the church? 
Oh, Father, let us recognize we are helpless and in desperate need of you. And impart to his Holy Spirit such a cry, such a cry. In Romans 8, verse 14 and 15. For all who are led by the Spirit, these are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of slavery, leading to fear again. You're not of this world. And I see all the things going on in this world, and many people are held in that place where they're so moved by the natural, that the natural port captures them, holds them. Oh, Father God, we repent and we come by way of the blood. Wash us right now and bring us back so that we stand as your sons and daughters. And as a consequence, but we have received a spirit of adoption as sons, by which we cry out, Abba, Father. And that word cry comes from a Greek word, krasio. And it's to cry aloud. It's that place where you don't care if people say you're crazy. The place where the world says, stop. That's a good place. Right now, if what you're saying and doing is an offending a devil, will they be louder? This is such an hour we need to understand how to walk in the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, and to be bold and loud for Him. And it starts in the secret place by having a deep cry of the Spirit that comes from the broken vessel that is wholly surrendered and yielded. Oh, Holy Spirit, come even now. We stand by way of the blood. Come and move in our lives. Come and bear witness of Jesus. Come and tell us of all the things Jesus did. Make them so real, so loud in our lives that they break us. And Father God, we stand once again as your children with a fresh first love, with a fresh zeal by the Spirit, with, Father, revelation knowledge that Jesus is the rock. Father, that the love of God would so control us, so move in us, that everything we do would be an outflow of that love. I thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father God. Mm. Smith said, in the wilderness. Oh, I still read that. Hallelujah. Let me move on. Smith said, God is with a person who only has a cry. And you're going to find there are times, there's places where you come to an end. There are times right now we are so in an intense spiritual battle. And you've come and said, God, I'm broken. I have nothing, but you've got to cry. And let that cry begin to come out. Let the groan that refuses to be silent crow and cry out to heaven and seek his face by the Spirit. Holy Spirit, lead us. Holy Spirit, we come and declare we are weak. Come, mighty Holy Spirit. We need you to have a groan come forth from us. A groan, Father God, that the mysteries, your secret purposes, Oh, I say, there are so many things. There are books. There are songs. There are ministries. There are lives. There are souls that God wants to see birthed on the earth that are in the deep secret heart of the Father. And He said, will you catch it? Oh, will we by the Spirit lay a hold and allow the Spirit of God so impregnate us with the very purpose, the very secret, the mysteries of the Father and allow a groan to come forth so that we don't contaminate it with our weakness of our native language, but just in a holy, passionate desperation, allowing the Spirit of God to so cry forth from us, a cry that goes further than your walls, further than your house, further than your city, a cry that expands. May it expand in us first. Oh, Father, I thank you. In Hebrews 5, 7, talking of Jesus, in the days of his flesh, he offered up both prayers and supplication with what? Loud crying and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his piety. There's something real. There's something true. God is looking for people that are real. People of true integrity. It's a time for that breath of the Spirit to blow through us. It's time to stop playing the game. You're standing in the secret place, the holy place of the Lord our God. He's come to meet with you. He wants you to so know and discern His presence. I believe He's coming so close in this hour. I believe in this hour He wants us so raptured in Him that we become oblivious to this world, so holy in Him. That is our destiny, our inheritance, so that in this cooperation, 
in this place where we're so hidden him. That cry that he gives us is a roar of the lion crying out in this hour, daring to make a stand and say no to the devil. He is running rampant. He is stealing, killing, and destroying. And the church, the salt, the light, the voice stays quiet. Oh, Holy Spirit, wreck us on the inside. Disturb us on the inside. And may we rise up. And may we be that voice that you call us to be. And let us start with a groan, with a cry, Father God, in the secret place. Because we need you to save us from death. Father, if you don't deliver us, we fail. Father, if you don't come, our sons and our daughters are lost. Father, if you don't answer us, our neighbors, our loved ones are gone. Father, if you don't move, there are so many backsliders who, Father God, will be spewed out. We need you, God. There's never been an hour where we need you more. Right now, we cry out, we need you, God. We need you. He's so close to coming. He is right at the door. So why are we not broken? Why are we not broken? Why are we not rending our hearts and cry out to Him? Spare your people, God, with a deep groan and cry. Smith said, may there be a cry until we witness Acts 11.15. And as the, I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them. God, I want the Spirit of God to so fall. I want even as people are listening, the Spirit of God fall on them. I want the Spirit of God to move on them. I want them to sense and to know the mighty presence of the Holy Spirit, to feel the conviction, the moving, the bearing witness, and Father, the impregnating with a deep groan. I thank you, Father. Oh, Jesus, we honor you. We worship. We are here because of you. And we get our eyes on we would just lift you up. We bless the name, Father. We worship the name, Almighty God. Jesus, we just give you praise. Jesus, come and move. Jesus, be glorified. Holy Spirit, you come to glorify Jesus. And as the Holy Spirit moves in you, He wants you to glorify Jesus. So glorify Him. I am telling you, when the Holy Spirit so comes, He comes to glorify Jesus. He comes to declare, Jesus is Lord. So allow Him to come in every area of your life. Let it begin to worship. Let the name of Jesus be exalted. Jesus, we're here to worship you. Come, Jesus, come. We glorify you. We honor you. We worship you. We worship you. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit. In Romans 8, 26, you know, we've been touching on this all night. Listen to this. In the same way, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Oh, we need you, Holy Spirit. We honor Jesus. We give you time. We give you place. Jesus, we bless the name. Father, we bless the name. Father, we're seeking your face. Father, we're seeking your face. We, are, we love you, Father. We honor you, Jesus. We stand because Jesus... You are Lord. Have your way. Father, we come and just boldly lift up the name. We glorify you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for that groan. I thank you for the holy desperation. Smith said, if you want to grow in grace and the knowledge of the grace of God, get hungry enough to be fed. Get thirsty enough to cry out. Be broken enough that you do not want anything in the world unless he comes himself. Oh, Father God, that we would so be broken and recognize how we have been caught by the world, how we have lusted after and desired the things of the world, and not you. So, Holy Spirit, come. So, come, Holy Spirit, and move right now. Come, Holy Spirit, as only you can. Come and open eyes to see, ears to hear, and let us see into the kingdom. And let us enter in. And Father, let us walk by the new order, the order of the Spirit. So come, Holy Spirit. Oh, Rambatis, we just lay hands on our spirit man and we speak life. We stir up the gift. Father, we speak life over in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on. Oh, let a groan come forth, Father. Oh, Holy Spirit, let a groan come forth. Father, we want your way. We want your will. We want to magnify you. Oh, somebody, we thank you, Jesus. Smith went on to say, we must have life in everything. 
Who knows how to pray except as the Spirit prays? What kind of prayer does the Spirit pray? The Spirit always brings you to the remembrance of the Scriptures. And He brings forth all your cries and your needs better than your words. The Spirit always takes the Word of God and brings it to you. Oh, fathers, we want. Holy Spirit, we ask you to come. I love how as we begin to cry out, the Spirit of God, as He reveals Jesus, what He did, He takes of the Word and He begins to show you and bring so clearly to you what Jesus did for you and who you are and the promises that you can stand on. And He bears witness with you that you are a son, a daughter. He bears witness that you've been made righteous, that you are accepted. He comes as the seal upon you. And then He puts in you that cry, that deep cry that only He can give. A cry that must be answered. Oh, we need that cry. Receive the touch. Receive the ministering of the Holy Spirit right now. The precious gift. That wonderful gift that the Father gives you. The one that Jesus said, I must go away that you would receive the Holy Spirit. This is His time. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 2. For we know that if the earthly tent, which is our house, is torn down, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For indeed in this house we groan, longing to be clothed with our dwelling from heaven. That should be our cry. We should not be so caught up on this earth. This is not our home. We're passing through. We're here for a purpose. And if we would so understand how to walk, working as a co-worker under the mighty Holy Spirit, allowing Him to so work in us and through us, we would understand that deep cry so that the Father would have His way on this earth, that we would rise up and understand the authority that we've been given to restrain, to hinder, to stop, and to boldly advance. Oh, Holy Spirit, come. We need that cry. We need that cry. We stand there and we watch our children going into sin and we're throwing our hands like, God, I don't know what to do. Oh, if somebody would pray. And God said, don't you know who you are? And don't you understand the groan that I put in you? A groan of desperation, but a groan of an authority. A groan that knows who you are because it knows who he is. A groan that comes and in all of it, bears witness, declares that Jesus is Lord. It's not a cry of, of, of spiritual weakness. It's a cry of natural weakness. Because the Holy Spirit comes in with His supernatural strength. Comes in declaring the overwhelming victory that God had in Jesus. And births it through you. That's why it's an awful cry that the enemy hates. That's why it's an awful cry that breaks and goes throughout the land because it must be carried. Oh my goodness, it echoes, it vibrates, it spreads, and the devil hates it. And anything the devil hates, I like. Oh, Holy Spirit, it's a groan that cries and breaks. It causes, Father God, the enemy to be stopped. It causes strength to arise. We need this cry. God, we need this cry, because we recognize, Father God, that we are here for you. And most importantly, we just want to be consumed in you. I long for the day to stand right before you face to face. Jesus, I understand how late the hour is and I'm looking forward with everything within me to seeing you, to knowing you. And every fiber of my being is groaning and crying out its worship of you. And Father God, every moment that I'm here on the earth, I am broken for others. I am here. I am bought with a price and I live for others. So Holy Spirit, I'm asking you, come and groan through me. Grown through me for the saints. Grown through me for the backslid. Grown through me for my loved ones. Grown, Holy Spirit. Put in a cry. A cry that the Father will answer. Father, for we need you to move. It is such a late hour. We need you and we worship you, Jesus. We worship you. Let me finish with this. Smith said, Or do you think the scriptures say in vain, The Spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously. I have been pondering over this verse for years, but now I can see that the Holy Spirit very graciously, very extravagantly puts everything to one side so that He cries for Jesus. The Holy Spirit yearns jealously for us all to have the divine will of God in Christ Jesus right in our hearts, that we be holy, 
completely surrendered that Jesus will be Lord over every aspect, over every area of our lives. Oh, Holy Spirit, let us in this groan yield. Let us come and so surrender. Come that Jesus truly might be Lord from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. Jesus, this is such a late hour we worship you. We want to know you. We humble ourselves before you. Father God, everything in us, we just bow. We come and truly surrender. Holy Spirit, have such a way. And let a cry, Father, a deep cry. Oh, God, a deep cry. Oh, God, a deep cry. Come out. Come, Holy Spirit, move. Jesus, we seek you. Father, we stand and we cry out to you. God, would you come move? Father, for our loved ones. Father, oh, for the broken. Father, for the lost. We cry and we stand. Father, for us that we might be so surrendered, yielded. Oh, that we have eyes to see, ears to hear. Father, that we be wrecked by your love. Father, we cry out with a groan that we would so be consumed, softened, matured by your love. Have your way in us. Oh, Holy Spirit, have your way. Jesus, you are Lord. Oh, I thank you. Come, Holy Spirit. And that Jesus be Lord over the throne of my imagination, the throne of my affection, every area, given all, holy, surrender to you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We bless you, Father. I lift up the name above all names, the name of Jesus. We give you glory. We give you praise. And I give you thanks. I thank you, Father. Oh, I pray that this message is touching you. I pray that in this hour where the warfare is intensifying, that you lay and take hold of the mighty Holy Spirit. It's a time for a full surrender to Him, no resistance, given all. May the Holy Spirit have His way and move so mightily in your life in the name of all names, a breaking off of all of the enemy, because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And you'll find that deep cry is a cry of true liberty, a cry for liberty in your life and liberty in your loved ones, liberty for the backslidden, it's a deep cry. And we need that cry. Oh, that that cry would arise, that shofar sound, where every saint stands and cries out, spare your people. The hour is late. It's such an hour that we need to be broken and crying out. I pray this message has so blessed you. I would ask, would you please like, share, subscribe, give your comments if it has. Because as you do, you help us. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. Would you help us to reach as many and to see life's impact and see a cry of intercession go out like never before. The hour is late. This is the time of the final wake-up call. So let us be moved by the Spirit. Let us be so touched and disturbed by the Spirit of the living God. I would also ask, would you consider becoming a prayer partner with us? It costs you nothing. Simply go. And if you want to be official, just you know, sign up on our partner page at robertpairs.org. You will get our email newsletter where I share my notes and invite you to our Zoom service. If you don't have a church right now and you're looking, please consider joining our online service because we need a fresh now word. You need the, that word blessing you, ministering to you while you're looking. For more information, go to robertpairs.org and go to the About page and then you can sign up in church. And finally, if God puts your heart to be a financial partner, I thank you and I bless you and I just thank you that you can go to the ministry site again and find out more. I want to remind you, I know what's happening in the world, but this is the day the Lord has made. I don't care. We're seeing great testimonies, great things that God is doing in the midst. It's time to be expectant. It's time to get ready, church. It's time for the cry. So I remind you that this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it because through and for him in the name above all names in the name of jesus amen and amen thank you